Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. All right, Jorde, a viewer, commented and asked me about uh, my love for Rolex and about sort of how it came about and suggested I make a video about that. So this is that video. And let's talk about that. How, how did I become a Rolex person? When did it happen? And I think you could divide my evolution to the watch enthusiast I am now into three parts. And this is sort of part one, the early years. And let me just say that I think your early years are really formative in, in your opinions and, and how you feel about brands and, and you know, watches. And I think uh, the experience I'm going to tell you about sort of planted the seed of Rolex in my mind as being sort of a this magical brand. It's funny because it's based on a falsehood, all right? But it still, it planted that seed and, you know, for decades afterwards, I, you know, I, I regarded it as sort of this really, you know, special brand, really just apart from, from all other watches. All right, so I was probably about five or six, you know, really young. I, I you know, period, period, a period of time when I have little memory of, of anything. I do remember, um, you know, snapshots and, and whatnot, but um, very early in my life, yeah, about uh, five or six, I think. And, uh, and I was in Charlottesville, Virginia with my mother. I grew up in Charlottesville. And we were on the downtown mall, which is this, you know, expanse of bricks with nice shops going down on either side. Um, Google it. It's a very beautiful place, very historic. And we were at a jewelry shop. And this jewelry shop, I'm still, I'm pretty sure it's still there. It was a Charlottesville institution, really nice uh, estate jewelry. And my mother was doing something there, maybe having a piece repaired, maybe shopping, I'm not sure. But I was left to my own devices and I found the, the watches. And they were Rolex watches. And again, I, I don't remember uh, much, okay? But I do remember they were steel sports watches, a lot of black dials, rotating bezels. Uh, I remember the term oyster, and I knew what that meant, that you could, you know, submerge it in water and, and it'd be okay. Um, I remember one of the watches had a bezel. Half of it was blue, the other half was red, and I think we know what that is. Um, and, and that's par partially one of the reasons why the GMT um, was a grail for me for a long time, because... It's, it's really the the only watch from this sort of anecdote, uh, what I consider sort of the birth of my uh, love for Rolex. Um, the only watch that I that I I'm certain I saw. I'm sure there was a sub there. I'm sure there were date just and whatnot. But but I but I do remember seeing that that dial, uh, not the dial, the bezel, and it. You know, I still have that that. Uh, I remember thinking at the time, even at this young age, like hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about that uh, that. Uh, you know, blue and red bezel. So, uh, but anyway, so so uh, there was a guy, uh, older guy behind the counter, and he told me about the you know accuracy of these watches, and <clears throat> you know at the time I should I should say I didn't I didn't really know anything about watches. I, mean, I was a young kid, and you know quartz mechanical. I don't think I could have told you the difference between the two, but. Talking about the accuracy, he said that given a year, the watches I was looking at were off about one or two seconds a year, right? That's what he told me. So, um, you know, even though I didn't know much about watches, it still made an impression. And I remember thinking, wow, an entire year and it's just one second off. You know, I remember thinking about, you know, clocks, uh, clock towers and, uh, you know, the, the clocks in front of banks and pretty much every clock in the city and about how your watch would probably be more accurate than any of those. So, um, you know, I, I, so accurate that you could set it, what, two or three times a, a lifetime and that'd be, that'd be adequate. And, uh, you're probably saying, no, you misremembered it. He probably said, one or two seconds a day, and, and maybe I did misremember it. Um, but I do remember being particularly impressed by it, and I, I remember thinking of, of an entire year. And, 
and so I think um, I think he might have been pulling my leg. Maybe he was trying to impress me. Uh, maybe kind of joking a bit. But um, you know, whether I misremembered it or whether he was you know telling me a tall tale, uh, it planted the seed. And for decades after that, I I sort of equated Rolex with accuracy. You know, and I thought that's I knew they were expensive watches. Um, and I thought they were expensive because they were off one or two seconds a year, okay? So there, the seed is planted based on a falsehood, but for decades after that, uh, I was, you know, if you had brought up Rolex, I would have thought, well, I mean, just fantastic watches, so accurate, so accurate. And I love the way they looked as well. Um, it must have made an impression on me because I remember at the time talking to my mother about these watches and she told me she uh she said well when you graduate i'll get you a rolex and uh walked out of the store and i never thought about rolex again and i didn't think about it either when i graduated which is a shame because i think i could have gotten a rolex out of it but um but i must have made an impression because uh you know i talked with my mother about it and whatnot so that's sort of the planting of the seed of rolex and it just sort of you know <laughs> was sitting in the back of my mind for, for decades after that. Um, I don't think I thought about Rolexes uh, until, you know, a uh, quarter of a century later when I was in Japan. And that's part two. Uh, I, will, I will say that there was um, one other time when Rolex sort of uh, was brought to my attention. I was, I was hanging out with a, a friend. I was probably uh, early teens. And I really respected this friend's parents, okay? His dad, um, you know, I'll, I'll keep anonymity uh, and whatnot, but his dad, um, well, frankly, his dad, before he passed away, was a um, world-famous philosopher, okay? Uh, an American philosopher. And his mother was highly educated and just a really great family. And I remember the mother talking to my friend and, and watches came up in some capacity and, and she said something like, oh, you'd like an oyster, wouldn't you? Or something like that, kind of joking to him. And when she said that, I, I thought back, you know, oh, oysters, Rolex, wow. So they obviously respect the brand. It was sort of a, maybe, maybe a, you know, my friend had, maybe he was impressed by them as well, but that sort of reaffirmed, well, I mean, this is a, like a really respectable family and they, um, Rolex obviously has a, a good reputation with them. And yeah, so seed planted. Stay tuned for part two when um, the falsehood uh, that I was told um, is exposed. All right, thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time.